Dr. Clary. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so glad to be here. So this is my first Instagram live. Well, you're here and that's good. Okay. <laughs> Because, and you know, the other thing is that Monica, um, who's kind of orchestrating this, said, you know, do not let anyone else join. And I'm not even going to tell you why that is. So it's only you and I. We're not letting any kind of lurkers join us. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, so I, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on television. So I'm really excited to talk about food allergies. Um, and my understanding is I live in Eastern North Carolina, and I feel like my whole life I've heard people say, oh, you know, they have a food allergy. They're lactose intolerant. And I think, is that really a food allergy? But, you know, you kind of hear people talking. And it wasn't really until um, my son had a friend with a severe peanut allergy that I really learned about, wow, food allergies are a disease, not just something people conjure up in their mind. Um, so this is relevant to me, and my dad is allergic to shellfish, um, so we're always cautious if we go to restaurants. But anyway, that's enough about me. Um, but tell us about you. Um, well, I'm a pediatrician. I did my fellowship actually in emergency medicine, but in the past couple of years have really spent more time focusing on mental health for pediatric and teen and young adult patients. Um, I came to FAIR. I worked for um, uh, FAIR, which stands for Food Allergy Research and Education, and I work here as the Senior Director of Education and Support Programs. And I came uh, to FAIR really to pursue my passion for food allergies. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm a mom of four, and one of my four kids has multiple anaphylactic food allergies. So I've always had this passion, and I think even trying to bring together and bridge together mental health and food allergies, you know, this was, this was a great fit. So that's what brought me here. Well, and that is why we're both here. Uh, this session was developed by Vendico Medical Education and FAIR, which is Food Allergy Research and Education, as you just said, with educational grant support from Genentech, a member of the Roche Group. And project information and disclosures will be, be able to, you'll see those in the link in the comments. Um, but let's, let's get going. This is going to be great. We have 15 minutes, and then you're going to be moving over next to my friend Amber Gardner over at Unearthed, Gar Unearthed um, Amber, where y'all are going to talk about allergies with communities of color. Um, but let's start with mine. So mine is really about this is a disease, not a diet. I think, I think yes. it's my, my interest. From your perspective, what are the most critical ways we can support individuals and families like yours um, dealing with food allergies? Well, that, that's what's so important. And I think what, you know, nights like this and what our organization tries to do is to educate families that are not affected by food allergies because the impacts that that could have on a food allergy family goes beyond what you could imagine. So I will tell you anecdotally, you know, just a little bit of education and having someone reach out and say, hey, is this snack okay for your son, that is moving mountains for me. Mm -hmm. And just showing that the community is supportive and, you know, rooting us on. So I really think that the biggest things that non-food allergic families can do is awareness, education, and then as parents, really teaching empathy. So that that goes across the board, but, you know, certainly in things where kids have chronic illnesses, it's really important. Yeah, and you know, when my friend's, my son's friend had the peanut allergy, every day my son had taken a peanut butter and jelly to lunch, you know, at school, and our school didn't have any kind of policy in place. And so I remember saying to Thomas, who's my oldest of four, he's 18, um, we got to come up with something new for lunch because you want to sit beside Hayden, oh, question, and his mom wouldn't mind, and he wants to sit beside you, so what can we do to make his lunch safe because we don't want him to have to sit in the classroom alone um and that was really a great exactly as you said discussion talking about empathy 
Well, and we, that is like how we have survived with my 12 year old son. I will tell you that one of the best calls that I got from school was when a teacher called me and told me that the allergen table is getting out of hand. <laughs> and that was because all of these boys were bringing in allergy safe lunches to sit with my son, oh. but then they were throwing, you know, tennis balls and basketballs. <laughs> and I, it was probably the one time that I did not say anything. And yes. I just was excited because our right. community really supported us and he knew his friends were, you know, they had his back. They were packing their lunches and saying, I cannot bring that and I cannot bring that because I want to sit at this table. So right. um, it, oh. really, it, move, it really makes a difference. Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. How would, um, what kind of community resources or initiatives make a difference if it's not a family reaching out? Um, that's a good Great question, because I, I look at the times of the year as how can other families who maybe don't have food allergies get involved in food allergy. So coming okay. up in May, May 12th through the 18th is Food Allergy Awareness Week, um, where you know school communities will get involved and you'll see your local communities and you know groups in, in your town who are getting involved. So if you see anything with turning it teal, um, that's Food Allergy Awareness Week. So sometimes it's just during that week, doing something to teach your kids that, you know, these are what food allergies are, this is what you have to look out for, these are serious, they're life-threatening, and they affect 33 million Americans. And, you know, what we're seeing now is that there's about two kids in every single classroom. So really teaching your kids these skills goes a long way. So I look at Food Allergy Awareness Week, then back to school time, because we do a lot to at FAIR to educate not only, you know, administer, administrators, teachers, and school staff, but families as well to kind of understand what some families are going through and coming back to school. And then one of my favorite, I don't want to play favorites, but is the Teal Pumpkin Project. So I don't know if you heard of that. Yes, I do, um, I do. And that one is, I think that's special to me because when my son was first diagnosed, that was probably the first allergy community event that we went to as a family. And we painted a teal pumpkin and it was the first time that he met all of these other kids that had food allergies and the event wasn't focused on food, it was focused on fun. And then our community just got involved. So putting a teal pumpkin outside your door at Halloween um, it really tells people within the food allergy community and other medical conditions that have dietary restrictions that your house is a house that has non-food items to give out. So things like stickers, erasers, and so forth. We did pencils. I like that. <laughs> Well, so I, my youngest has autism. So, you know, it's always a discussion, this kind of Halloween thing and the teal pumpkin. I remember somebody was like, it's for autism. I was like, no, no, that's food allergies. We're not going to get all the things mixed up together. Um, right. <laughs> but how great that that's a way to educate everybody. Well, you'll, you'll laugh at this. Yesterday, I got a text from a, my oldest son, a friend of his mo a friend's mother. And she was like, oh, I had no idea you worked with FAIR. And I was like, well, I haven't, it's brand new. Well, her son, who's a senior in high school, severe food allergies, and she had gotten your email saying, hey, we're gonna be on tomorrow night over, you know, doing a round robin on Instagram. And I thought even just signing up for FAIR's email list of kind of keeping up with what's happening might be great. Yeah. So important. We have so many resources available, again, to families affected by food allergies and those that aren't. So it's really, you know, the resources are there. If people want the education and want to create awareness, we, we certainly have those available. What do you believe every parent, grandparent, caregiver should know about managing food allergies in children? Great question. Um, this brings me back to the days that I think my son was first diagnosed and thinking, you know, first thinking that I would never be able to leave his side. Um, and then thinking, well, what are the what are the tactics that could get me to feel comfortable? And I think the first thing is really, you know, having that knowledge that food allergies are serious, they're life threatening, and really taking that that 
you know, message and knowing that even one bite of food could be harmful. And then from there, I relayed that message to everyone who was in my son's life because, you know, lots of our family members, people who loved us and, you know, embraced us, didn't understand food allergies and really weren't, you know, they weren't up to speed on, they, you know, people thought, oh, well, maybe he can have a little bit. How do you know? You've never oh. tried. Well, that's where, you know, I, I was able to kind of educate people and say, look, this is what we have to do. Everyone who took care of my son um, had to be trained with using an epinephrine auto injector. So I used to, you know, save any of the old ones and then I would get an orange and teach people how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing for me was for our caregivers, grandparents, family, friends to feel comfortable with him being in the house and with him, you know, and managing what, what we needed with his food allergies. And that came and, you know, really truly everyone wanted to learn um, because it was something new to a lot of my family and, and friends. Well, I love that idea of learning with the epinephrine auto injector. My daughter developed a kind of late in life um, allergy to amoxicillin. And I didn't realize it. We were driving to school and she's like, I'm itchy, I'm red. And I thought, oh, you're fine, you know. And she started not being able to breathe. And so I did the first thing I thought of. I thought I'm going to drive to the school nurse, you know, and I hauled her into school and our school nurse was like ready, you know, ready to go. And we ended up, she rode with me to the ER, but rode with me, which was so kind because it was, it was so scary. Um, thank God. Thank God for the school nurses. Oh, I know that, boy. you know, the, the amount that they have on their plate with student to nurse ratio is enormous. And, you know, I just think that the job that they do is, is so well done. And I'm really impressed that, that your school nurse actually drove with you to the hospital. So that was really an extra, an extra benefit. It there. was. We live in a teeny tiny little town. So you're never a number here. You know, you're somebody that you see at the grocery store or wherever. It's really nice. Um, are there common misconceptions or critical pieces of advice you find yourself frequently addressing about food allergies? Well, certainly, as we just mentioned, that, you know, people not understanding that one bite could really be right. dangerous and that a small amount could really cause a life-threatening reaction. The second is that food allergies are serious. I think that there are a lot of people who equate food allergy with a food intolerance, um, and people really think, oh, well, you know, you can't have that food because you're going to get you know, gastrointestinal or a stomach ache or, you know, right. some nausea, but that's not the case. A food allergy is an immune mediated response that really can cause what we call an anaphylactic reaction, which is a severe life-threatening reaction. So that's one of the biggest misconceptions. I think another misconception is about the treatment. So with anaphylaxis, a severe food allergy reaction, we have one medicine that will treat it. And that's the epinephrine auto injectors that we have. And sometimes I think that there is this misconception that epinephrine is not safe to give. So I always tell anyone who is taking care of my son, if you suspect that he is having a severe allergic reaction, give him his epinephrine. It's the epinephrine that will save him in that reaction. Oh, that's great to know. Oh, okay. Um, and lab, we have one more question before I'm gonna let you head on. What are the latest advancements in food allergy research or treatments that might offer new hope or options um, for families and patients? So this is an exciting time for food allergy. And I'm, I, as a parent and physician, um, really have to say how excited I am. So um, we now have two FDA approved um, treatments for food allergies and treatments don't equate with, you know, wiping away the food allergy. We've got one, which is a peanut protein powder um, that is given in small increments as an oral immunotherapy and can create a level where your threshold to reacting is a little bit different and a little bit you know higher so that if you had an accidental exposure, you wouldn't have as severe a reaction is the thought. 
Um, and just in February of, of this year, um, the FDA approved omalizumab, um, which is a biologic that actually is what we call an anti-IgE, and um, it's a, it attacks the IgE, but it also raises the reaction threshold. Um, and that's really exciting because, you know, just the thought of having kind of a safety net um, is really, you know, something that as a mom, I'm excited to learn more about and see the next steps. Oh, that's great. Well, I just appreciate so much being with you tonight. And um, I would encourage everybody to follow Dr. Cleary to the next segment at Unearthed Amber. And there's a survey I've put up in my Instagram stories. Don't miss your chance to win a $100 gift card. We have five of those going out. And tonight's live will be in my Instagram feed as well as Vindico's Instagram and uh, YouTube. So I'm just excited to, to know about FAIR and look forward to talking to you in the future. Yes. Well, thank you again. It was really nice meeting oh, you. Oh, you too. Take care. You too. I'll see you at the next one. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.